What's going on guys, 8BitGlitz79 here, and we've made it to the ninth day of the 12 Nostalgic Days of Christmas. Hope you're enjoying the series so far, and all the memories that have been shared by our guests and yours truly. So with that, I want to throw it over to our first guest. So our first guest is actually a dynamic duo. That's right, it's two people. It's a couple, and they're called Coapple of Nerds, uh, led by Fresh and Mary. Um, I met these guys uh, this year, I think it was this year, um, and uh, they do VGM unboxings, uh, I think they do Retro Game Treasure unboxings, they do a horror DVD, uh, Blu-ray unboxing subscription, that's wicked cool. They do uh, game reviews, uh, um, uh, I forget what they call it now, but they do a game review where it's, uh, when the game first comes out, it's kind of like first week review or something like that. And that's pre been pretty cool. I've uh, been seeing a couple games that I, I was been interested in, so it was nice for them to share that information in, in those games. Uh, they do uh, some other stuff too, and they have a fantastic X Men wall behind them of action figures. So, with that, let's see what Fresh and Mary have for us today. Hey, it's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary, and we are a co-op of nerds. And we were asked by Eight Bit Glitch Seventy Nine to present an item that is nostalgic to us for his twelve. Nostalgic days of Christmas. So for me, I wish I could say that I got just tons and tons and tons of Sega games. <laughs> but that did not happen. My family <laughs> did not roll like that. So for me, when I think of Christmas and nostalgia, it's the X-Men wall. And two figures, um, sort of in particular. We got the Weapon X, because who doesn't love Wolverine and booty shorts? <laughs> and then... Age of Apocalypse Cyclops. I can kind of look in a little bit. Hopefully, I'm getting it in camera. They took the white mate or white meat baby face Cyclops and gave him an edge, and I thought that was super awesome as a kid. He's kind of a tough guy. That's right. And for he's me, got stubble, long <laughs> hair. That's Cyclops. Yeah, the long hair I think <laughs> is a little more shocking to me than even the stubble. So for me, it was Barbie. So this is actually my Barbie from um, from when I was a kid. This was my favorite Barbie. So, you know, like, girls always have, like, the top Barbie that's mm -hmm. always the mom of the household. And, you know, the other ones are just friends and sisters and aunts and that stuff. That all so, look very similar. Yeah. Well, I had... I had a good variety to my okay, Barbies, okay. so um, but this one was my favorite, and this is not actually the outfit that she came in. She was actually a Christmas Barbie. She was one of okay. the, the holiday season Barbies that I got, and I think I got this uh, in Christmas of 1991, which would have been the year that my mom passed, but uh, the dress that she's wearing is actually uh, a wedding dress that was separate, a separate accessory. It didn't come on a Barbie. It was just separate, and then I always had them in the wedding dress because they were always getting married. So. Oh. <laughs> Watch out, Ken. Dumb Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much, 8BitGlitch79, for asking us to do this, or for allowing us to be a part of it. And uh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I should have known Fresh was going to pick uh, the X-Men uh, action figures as his pick. I mean it's in every video behind them so and he talks about it all the time so awesome picks there uh, i never really followed the x-men um i think i was a little bit older when that cartoon kind of came out and i had other interests and in music and stuff like that and i kind of lost touch with that whole um uh, that whole community or that that world but uh yeah and then mary's picking barbie i obviously don't have any experience with barbies at all no matter what anybody tells you, I've never owned a Barbie in my life. <laughs> but uh, I know I've had friends, I've had sisters. Uh, my sister was too old uh, for Barbies when I was growing up. She's uh, 10 years older than me, so uh, I didn't have Barbies around in my house. But I had a lot of friends who had sisters, and yeah, Barbies were always invading our G.I. Joe and He-Man uh, escapades a lot. So yeah, I can see that. So, one. so now I want to throw it over to our next guest. It's uh, another dynamic duo, but we're going to have to head up north. And I'm not talking about Santa and Mrs. Claus. I'm talking about Retro Rivals. Now, some of you guys might know these guys. They've been around for a while and doing some great stuff. Uh, their, their content and their videos is just top shelf, top notch stuff. Um, one of my favorite things is uh, they built a bar tap out of an, uh, an old OG Xbox and using the controllers as the tap handles. I thought that was fantastic. And she does some great 
uh, Jen does some great fantastic artwork and you can see some of that in their videos and it's just amazing she needs to sell these things I mean I would totally buy something um, but anyways enough of me jabbering you want to hear what they got to say so what do you guys got for us hey Bit, thank you for inviting us to participate in your 12 days of Christmas special and we have a few favorite memories from Christmas some gaming related some movie related I'm gonna let Scott go first. What is your earliest gaming memory Christmas related? It's probably the first console I got, which was the NES. And the first game I got for the NES was not Mario because I got the base bundle yeah. at the time, which I think only had one controller and didn't come with a game. So my first game was Jackal. It was. And significant to Scott this year for Jackal as well, I finally beat it. I finally beat it! <laughs> it only took like 35 years or something, something like probably that. around there, but he finally beat Jackal. My earliest Christmas memory uh, was when I got my SNES console, not at launch. Um, I probably got it when I was like 14-ish, so I don't know how much I was actually into it. I got Super Mario World and Dr. Mario Tetris. I do believe. They, those must have came as they, a bundle? They either came as a bundle or my parents bought me one extra to go with it. Okay. I don't remember playing it as much as our Nintendo, which we got in the summer one year, uh, probably when I was six or seven. But yeah, I, I wish I would have kept it, but I didn't. I sold it to my cousin. I was 14. I was more concerned about <laughs> boys than I was games, Oy. and then I sell, sold it to my cousin, who barely used it too, because then she was more concerned about boys than games. It, it really kills me though, I don't have that original oh, yeah. console from a kid when I was a kid. No, other than gaming memories, I would say Christmas movies are a big part Oh yeah. Um, of my Christmas tradition. Yep. For every year, there's always one movie we have to watch here. There is one movie, if you guys are noticing Scott's new shirt at all, it is a dead giveaway hint to what the... And if you don't know what this reference <laughs> is, you've lived under a Christmas rock your entire life. you lived life. under a lump of coal. A lump of coal. It is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is the best Christmas movie ever made. I have... <laughs> I have to tell you guys, I did not watch this movie until I watched it with Scott for the first time. Shameful. I know, and initially I was like, we have to watch this every year. Yes. I think it's mostly because it was forced on me, but now I really, really, really love it. I actually look forward to watching it every year. We haven't watched it yet. fully this year yet. We've been busy. We have been busy, but we oh, have to sit down and watch this. We oh, yeah. have to because it's, it, it is one of the best Christmas movies. Now, my Christmas movie from my childhood is Home Alone. I remember waiting for this to come out, thinking, oh, please, please, I can't wait to watch it. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and it is still a great movie. You still watch it and laugh, even though you know what's coming. It's the same as this, like, I still laugh at the same jokes and stuff. Alex, That Alex is Alex's this favorite Christmas It movie. is, so we share that together. Yep. And I, I I, don't know what my favorite, like this clearly, my favorite part is in this. It's way better than that. Shut up. It's clearly. My favorite part in this movie has to be his rant, and then at the end, <laughs> holy shit, shit. Where's, where's the title? title? Like that is the best. I really want to <laughs> memorize it for next year and do the rant with a green screen, with the tree in the background, cut back to the family, I would love to memorize it, but that's gonna take some time. It's not that long. It's not, but it's, there's no like rhyme or reason to anything he said. I wouldn't be surprised if that was not scripted at all and he just went blah, blah, blah. What's your favorite Home Alone part? There's so many. Oh man. I like when he touches the doorknob too. Or slips on the ice. <laughs> That's funny too. That's I think when he 
when he reaches through the little doggy door with the little air rifle there, he can shoot him in the nuts. Not Charles. Oh, God. They are. Now, what did you hear about this movie that somebody thought would be a good idea? Remember? Involving Macaulay Culkin? Oh, I seen it. I think it was seen it on Facebook. The whole premise of the movie is that they take. Um, Macaulay Culkin. Macaulay Culkin. Now, at the age of probably in his 40s. Yeah, right? probably. 30s, and 40s. Remake the movie and have the cast just ignore the fact that he's in his 40s. <laughs> and he's playing. He's still at Kevin. Yeah, he's still a 10 year old Kevin. 8 year old Kevin. 8 year old Kevin. 8 year old yeah. Kevin. Thank you so much for inviting us to be part of this video. Yes. We love Christmas. It's, oh, it's, it's my favorite time of the year. It's the best time of year. If you have kids at Christmas time, like there's no, there's nothing better That's except for when it. they don't give you a reaction that you expect. Anywho. So yeah, we're gonna throw this back to you and thanks again and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's from Retro Rivals. And Canada! And Canada! <laughs> yes, again, a pick of Christmas Vacation. Oh my God, I've already mentioned in previous episode that's my number one favorite Christmas movie. I quote that thing year round, all day and through the house. Um, every time the wife or kids ask, where's, where's, where's this, where's that? I always got to say, I don't know, Margo. And why is the carpet all wet, Todd? I don't know, Margo. And, uh, obviously the whole, you know, shitter is full quote is used often, so. <laughs> yeah, that's a very quotable movie all year round. And, uh, of course... Home Alone, we've discussed that ad nauseum on this series. So, yes, that's another classic that's got to be watched every year. Um, perfect movie for the season and perfect movie altogether. I, I don't, that's like the best written Christmas movie uh, involving a kid ever, I think. Um, and then picking the NES and the Super NES, I mean, those are like the staple consoles. Those are, those are my favorites, um, especially the NES. So, awesome picks there as well so with that I need to talk about my pick so my pick is kind of different it's there's an item but it's not really an item it's more of just a memory but what's cool is I have the memory sort of on a cassette on videotape and that is my first major concert experience now, uh, I've been to small little concerts uh, in the mid 90s and stuff of uh, local bands and things like that. But my first arena rock um, concert was in 1997, March 5th, and it was in Boston, and it was to see Metallica. Metallica rules! That was my first big major concert. And uh, we went, now this was back when Ticketmaster, you couldn't get tickets online through Ticketmaster or whatever. You had to go where they sold tickets. And so I remember a small mom and pop rental place uh, was actually an outlet that sold tickets as well for Ticketmaster. And I remember the day they went on sale, we, I basically, I should step back. I went to the show with a bunch of friends from uh, high school. And uh, so we, all three of us met there had money from the other three, because I think there were six of us, if I remember correctly. And uh, we waited in line. Sir, why did you wait until the last minute to pay your taxes? Taxes? Isn't this the line from Metallica? So that we could buy tickets early in the morning. And then they came out and gave us wristbands. And so we have an order. So it, it was pretty exciting to be standing there waiting, hoping that we get tickets. And we got in and we got the tickets. It was awesome. So uh, yeah, that was back in the days where you didn't have to sit on your couch and just hit refresh until you got tickets. You had to wait in line for them. Uh, but then the day came and we went and we actually did it up. Since it was our first big show and uh, none of us at the time really drove or anything like that, we had to have a chaperone and my brother was our chaperone because uh, he's like 12 years older than me. So uh, the parents of the my friends and stuff wasn't gonna let us go unless we had an, an adult with us. So my brother w was sufficient, I guess, <laughs> since he was 12 years older than me. So that would have made him like 20 something. 
Um, but um, we actually, instead of just driving down there, we all pitched in and rented a limousine and we took a limo from my house all the way to Boston for the show and back. And that, that's made it even more special. Um, now remember it was a Wednesday, the show was a Wednesday. So everybody got on the bus after school Tuesday, uh, Wednesday rather, to my house and then the limo showed up and we went to the show and then we all crashed at my house and then all got on my bus and went to school the next day on Thursday. So it kind of sucked that it was a school night, but there was nothing gonna stop us from going. So what I'm getting at with the recording thing is, years later, um, as we all know, this site eBay uh, appeared, these online auctions. And in the early days, I mean, it was pretty like Wild West on eBay. You could pretty much get anything on there. I mean, you could probably practically get a baby on there probably. <laughs> but I remember early, the early days of eBay, there would be stuff on there like uh, bootleg things and stuff. And I remember I got a ton of bootleg concerts on video, uh, video cassette. Um, for my collection and so that I could watch and uh, I actually came across and found somebody selling Metallica March 5th 1997 Boston on VHS it was so long they had split on two cassettes uh, video cassettes and um, yeah I was like ecstatic that I could actually get the concert I went to on video so I've only watched this uh, a few times since I bought it because I'm always afraid the tape's going to get eaten <laughs> and I really need to get these like down onto my computer uh, some someday. But it's awesome that I can actually kind of relive my first concert experience um, whenever I want to. I can watch the exact concert that I, that I went to. So. That's uh, that's just a quick memory. I know it's not in, like a gift or Christmas related. Of course, a lot of my stuff haven't been because, uh, um, yeah, I just just love talking about different memories, and uh, that's why I kind of opened the series up to anything. And it doesn't matter. It's just it's just about remembering the good times and remembering uh, significant things in your life and stuff. So, oh, well, that was mine for this episode. Okay, guys, so thank you for watching this episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe, the like button, and uh, share the video around. All right, guys? And let's get some more people watching this and uh, maybe hopefully commenting and conversing down below. Um, so with that, guys, until the next episode, I'm glitching out.